In the past it was necessary if there was a communication with the PowerShell connector just to secure the data stream in a way of that encryption was to be activated. Now with the new PowerShell connector and one identity manager we first time support the method to secure string which just converts a password directly into a secure string. With that password will not transfer it uh, in a clear text way. It's not necessary now just to ensure that the transfer is completely secured. With the help of that we can now use that method to transfer passwords as a secure string. Other methods might be as well possible in the future. We will see if this is necessary. If you are interested to figure out how the whole thing works then you can see that on the left lore there is an XML snippet that shows you how the whole thing looks like and as you can see there is that new line conversion method equals to secure string and that is what your value in this sample named password just will convert. Some enhancements as well for our LDAP based connectors. Um, here we have two enhancements. One of them is that we now support more non-standard LDAP schema definitions. This is a really good message for all the people who are building up LDAP synchronization projects from scratch. They hopefully now can just select out of a specific template set. Additionally to that uh, the old LDAP connector in version 7 was just returning pretty much often with a general error message when something was going on during the synchronization. Here the developers decided now to deliver back the error causing string. That means at the end the detailed message back from the LDAP that tells what's going wrong. With that it should be easier to build up these synchronization projects in the future and from my perspective this is a good message. Hey, and now let's have a look uh, in the synchronization editor and talk about all these improvements we made in the synchronization editor. My apologies for the slides you saw before. It is not very easy to show you new connectors, new system connectors to a lot of target systems or for example, a lot of changes in some synchronization agents because for that I have to use a Visual Studio. I don't want to show you code and I don't want to explain code, especially because I'm not a developer. But what I like to show you are features you can directly see in front ends. For example, the synchronization editor. There are many improvements in the synchronization editor. The first improvement I like to talk about, it's the improvement that you can now build groups in a synchronization project. What is that and why we need this? Uh, what you need is a synchronization project. You can that see that on the screen. I loaded my active directory domain synchronization project here for my domain. And if I step to startup configuration, then you can see that this startup configuration comes with two different schedules. Honestly, I talked with some of my PSO friends and they told me, hey, we have customers and they have super huge environments and they have up to 20 different startup configurations. Wow. 20 startup configurations. Hopefully they have a really good reason for that, but I'm sure they have. And because of that, the following feature was implemented. If you have more than one of these configurations, that means more of these schedule configurations. It could be that one of these schedules starts and during the synchronization, it's already running, started by the first schedule. A second schedule starts as well. And now normally you should get two times the synchronization against the same environment. Maybe with different workflows because the reason why you normally create more than one of these synchronization projects is that you have different workflows or you have different variable sets. Whatever, if this is the case, then it might make sense to handle this in a way of if one synchronization project is running, the other should wait. That means be postponed until the first one stops, for example. And to configure that, we can now create groups and we can as well configure the behavior. Let's do that. Therefore, I added here my first synchronization step to the grouping tab. Here we are. And you can see what I have to do. I have to enter a group name. So let me say this is my group one. Okay, okay, it's not very interesting, but okay. And I can as well say what should happen there. But I like to do that on my second configuration. As you can see, my second schedule here is a second config. And if I go into that and step to grouping, I can switch to the same group. Here we are. 
And now I can at the end configure what I like. I can say ignore it. Okay, then nothing will happen. Postpone, that means it will wait until the other one ended. Or I can say, let's stop that with an arrow and tell the ad, hey, there is another one running. And because of that, this one could not be started. So postpone means just wait on the other. I will configure that now. And the last one, stop with arrow says, no, I will do nothing. And maybe I get started with the next schedule. This feature is very needful, especially for people with many of these configurations. And this is the way how to use it. Have you ever created synchronization projects from the scratch? Then maybe it was necessary to solve the following issue. In your data source, for example, in a CSV file, there are values in a specific column named one, two, three, but just storing them into the identity manager, you need instead of the numbers, just something like green, orange, or blue. That means each number, is just related to a specific color and the color it's the value you need in the database unfortunately the source itself comes with that specific number to solve such problems it was necessary in the past with the help of virtual properties just to convert these numbered values into text and therefore it was necessary to create a conversion script and every time another color was just added it was necessary as well to modify that conversion script. Much easier it is since we have one identity manager version eight to use a new virtual property of type data mapping for that. And this virtual property of type data mapping allow to enter the complete list. That means on the one hand side, the numbers on the other hand side, the corresponding colors. And with that, uh, the system itself can convert from the source to the target easily by using the list that was configured to do that. I like to show you that property in an Active Directory synchronization project. Okay, this is not a CSV import. The reason at present I have not a synchronization for CSV files in my system, but at the end, the thing I want to show you is that virtual property type and uh, the rest is something you can just configure in your synchronization project on your own. I have just opened one synchronization project. It's my Active Directory synchronization project, but I did not care. I only need one. I was stepping to mappings. You can see that here. And in mappings, I was just open the mappings of the contacts. So to see now my new property, I hit here on the plus. Here we are. I step to data mapping. This is the new one. I, for example, have to handle here stuff of type text. And now I can enter the values. Remember, I one, two, three are my values. And be careful, this is a fourth value. Here we are, three values. And that was blue, green, and orange, for example. So here we are. Now I'm handling just a specific data list. I know the values are one, two, three on that side. And these are the colors should be displayed. And with the help of that, I can now handle that. So this is my list property, whatever list it is. Yeah, display name could be as well, list. And base property, it's now a problem. I take the extension attribute. So, and with that, I have now configured the left side, which is my Active Directory side. The next side will be the database side where maybe something other else happens there. And some hints, if you want to use that first, the right side, I can ignore upper and lower case. That could be sometimes very helpful. The second thing is I can handle the error situation. That means the situation where something could not be found. For example, I can say just ignore it. Yeah, or I can say pass even undefined raw values. That means if something other else which is not in the list comes through, I can use that. Or I can say handle undefined values as errors. That means I get an error message that something was not able to map or able to handle in this specific property. The second thing, this is important. If you use such lists, then I have to ensure that the sort order is correct. Sort order means in that case that if I want to handle blue in both systems, blue should be in the first position and green in the second position. Um, and this is completely independent on what I have here in the values or in the, in the converted strings. At the end, I have to ensure that if I want to do something like that, that the position is correct for the same value however it looks like. This is very helpful, I think, and I really hope you will enjoy it.